This video is not sponsored. All views and opinions are my own. Sandmark did not pay me. I don't even get to keep the filter. And they don't get to see this video. So let's get into it. What's good everybody welcome back to the channel if you're new here i am brian keith i am a photographer videographer just all around content creator and i'm gonna tell you why i personally like to use variable indie filters and how i use them let's get it so this company sandmark they reached out to me to see if i was interested in testing out their motion pro filter and this motion pro filter is really just a variable nd filter and since i already use variable nd filters on about 80 percent of my video shoots i figured why not Sandmark describes their Motion Pro filter as being designed without compromise for the photographer, filmmaker, or casual shooter. The Motion Pro filter allows you to adjust your camera to any environment. It has multi-coated cinema glass. There's three to six stops, so ND8 to ND64, industrial grade aluminum, and it's ultra thin, measuring at 7.2 millimeters of thickness. And of course, the filter they sent me is the 82 thread size. So, all right, that's enough of the specs. I'm pretty sure you've heard like what an ND filter is and what it does and there's this very cliche like saying that you hear on YouTube a lot and pretty much every YouTuber that I've seen cover this topic use the same analogy. Honestly, that analogy is, is, is perfect, but pretty much the ND filter is like sunglasses. Or like sunglasses for your camera. I know I told you everybody's heard it before, but it's true. That's exactly what it does. It blocks light from entering your lens. The number one reason I use an ND filter is to block light when I'm shooting in a raw or a log picture profile. I remember when I was doing a lot of research and I was just on YouTube a lot and I would see people on location outside, sun high, you know, uh, ISO would be at 800 and they're shooting with like a, a lens that shoots up to 1.4. And I'm like, why is your ISO so high? So of course you're gonna need an ND filter if you're shooting at 800, like who shoots with those settings? So it wasn't until I started shooting with the X-T3 that I understood that when you have a camera that's able to shoot in a log picture profile or a log profile period, the base ISO is a lot higher. So you need something to compensate, you know, all that light entering the camera. So you need ND filter. And for me personally, I love to use variable ND filters. One, they're, they're just convenient, man. I don't really have time to sit here and see how many stops of light I need to block on one particular shot. We'll be here all day. Now, I understand why they do it on big sets, you know, because that's more of a controlled environment. But when you're running and gunning, you don't really have time like that to be fumbling around with a bunch of different filters. So for me, variable ND filters are the move as you know we say on uh, one of my most recent video shoots it was a birthday recap it was lit it was outside around 3 to 4 p.m. so the Sun was just hitting everything now in that type of situation you're definitely gonna need a, a variable ND filter so what better way to test this filter than to actually use it on a gig it really did what it was supposed to do you know for me you know my expectations aren't too high when it comes to filters like all i need you to do is block light so i don't have to shoot at a you know f10 11 16 22 future me so i guess i didn't explain the effects of not having an nd filter so there's only two other ways you can expose your image without using an nd filter 
One is adjusting your shutter speed. That means cranking it way up. So instead of me having 1 48th of a second when I'm shooting in 24 frames, I would probably crank that up to like 1 2,000th of a second. Now that affects your motion. It gives you this unrealistic motion blur, which really doesn't look too good in video. It looks super choppy, right? The other way is to crank your aperture up. So instead of shooting at 2.8, I would then shoot at maybe an F11, F16. That just puts everything into focus. And you don't get that, for lack of better words or phrases, you don't get that cinematic looking image. So variable ND filters come in handy. It's a very useful tool, especially when shooting video. Now let's get back to the video. 99.9% .9 of the time, you will not catch me using a uh, variable ND or any ND for photography. Now, I know a lot of people like to use these filters for shooting off camera flash. And, you know, I'm just not one of those people. Now, I will use it for long exposure photography. I want to put some examples. I'll use it for long exposure as well as that time lapse you guys seen at the beginning of the video. And I have to say shout out to Nikon for having the best in camera time lapse of all time. Like hands down. Time lapse and also long exposure. Other than that you will never catch me using a variable ND filter or any ND filter for photography. Like I don't use it for portraits. I don't use it for landscapes. None of that. So, moving along. <laughs> so, the build quality is good on this filter. Um, the extra stop of ND, three to six stops. Um, the color shift, there's no real noticeable color shift with this filter. And it does not have the X pattern. So, that's always good. Now, the things I did not like about this filter, one being the packaging. I feel like the packaging could have been a lot better. Um, as somebody who has a background in marketing, I understand that when you're opening a product, packaging is all an experience. So if the packaging doesn't look up to par, you know, it kind of takes away from the product a little bit. But on the flip side, they do include this carrying pouch, you know, that actually has the pop of color. So. I guess they made up for it. Other thing I did not like is the thin bezel. Um, I'm used to filters with a much larger bezel design. Um, and because it's so thin, it's kind of hard to rotate. Like I'm used to shooting really quick, readjusting and moving on. Well, with this one, I can't really do that because it's so thin that you have to really focus on turning. But I guess on the flip side too, to prevent you know overturning they do have hard stops can't go lower than three you can't go above six that's enough about the filter hope y'all enjoyed the video if you would consider like commenting subscribing to the channel as always it's greatly appreciated it's brian keith peace